Narrative Club. On today's episode, we'll have none other than writer, director, producer Dennis Reed talking about his upcoming film, Indictment. So come on in, kick back and relax. But before you do that, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Welcome back to the Narrative Club. Hey, Dennis. What up, baby? Thank you for coming to sit down and kick it with me today. And let's talk about who is actually Dennis Reed. Who is Dennis Reed? Um, a director, a producer, a writer, a father, a bar owner, a restaurant owner. I don't know. Somebody pretty dope, I guess. <laughs> you are dope, though. You are dope. I, 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 can't, I never had a problem with this. Never. The world did, though. <laughs> be like, yo, bro, you cool, but... I got a promote. Yo, I got to have a good 
good character outside of this movie. You know, I gotta be a good person outside of the movie. And that's like one thing like with Lee Master and Velda and and DZ. Those are the kind of people that I like being around because they don't they don't just promote when they in your face. They promote it 24-7. Yeah. And when I got Boom and DeWine, another one of y'all people, mm-hmm. it, it, yeah, dope. You know, when I got them, they was like, bro, we got to advertise like this. I'm always posted. And that's the stuff that people don't get. Anybody can be a dope actor. Anybody can be a dope actor. It takes a lot to be a businessman. And this, yeah. this actually is your your job. It goes and tell. But let's talk about, because I see you got Lee Master and DZ. Right. Two of your main guys. My guys. Two of your main guys. They're my guys. And um, I never seen DZ perform uh, or act in any movie until I saw First Lady 2. Okay. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I was like, he really good. They hate him. The the world hate him. His character, his like, character was bad. Yeah, like, his character I'm, was bad. Like I, I've gotten so many text messages. I mean, inboxes and DMs about you have to kill him. They hate him. Now, I'm opposite. Yeah. I will, like he did some dirty grimy stuff. It's only when it was, well, he was extra. As hell, I could die. Nah, he was extra, but it was always justified. You can't kill one of his and think he's not going to come back for one of yours. Mm-hmm. So when you do First Lady 3, I'm very intrigued to see how. Like, because, um, what's her name? What's whose name? Maria. Maria. She, like, sleep with it. Yeah. So, and it's sad it got to be a man to go up with it, but she got so much hood and gangster to it. That he got he, the revenge got to be sweet for him. It got to be sweet because the stuff they was trying to pull, they had all kind of inside job, inside loop. But he did too, because I'm looking like with a cop in the end. I'm looking like that shit is crazy. But he did a phenomenal job. I didn't know that he could he, act. That he job. he is one of the people that put in a lot of work, like outside of just being on set and outside of uh, doing rehearsals. Do really be calling like bro. Do you think I should do this? He be looking at other movies, trying to build up his character. And like that was the the agreement with me and him because when I first tried to get him for First Lady, he's like, "Bro, if you about to put me in a role, I'm being there for two seconds, I pass. Now, if you gonna let me really act and really do what I'm trying to do, then I'll do it." And I'm like, "All right." So it it was a crazy story. Like the the dude that was supposed to play Cisco. He basically pulled out on me in like two days of filming. And I gave him the script and he just killed it. And he did, that he did. And then you have Lee. And everybody know Lee from different words. Yeah, Lee. Lee take off that shirt and start <laughs> to do that. Like, yeah, I want to say we know Lee is unpredictable, but like I've known um him differently from the movie world. So even when I see him at a event. It, it, it's what it's, it's, so, but he he did good. I'm trying to get him to stop dancing. Why? It's the be, bread and butter. No, because um, I think that at the end of the day, um, our Detroit actors, we need to get them to they don't have to do that. They don't have to do the job shit no more. They can do just a movie shit. And it, it's going to take us as the producers and directors to get them where they need to be. You know? Yeah, because, I understand that. Because but... he should, Lee should be able to be at least being able to make ten thousand a month off his actor, and 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 ten thousand don't sound like a lot of money to some people, but I'm thinking like if this dude could just act and make ten G's a month, that would feed his family and make him better, and then it's going to help the other businesses that he. And then they're going to yeah. also help him be in more stuff. You know, because if he... I used to sell drugs. So, in my mind, when I stopped selling dope, it was like, I got to put my same hustle in doing these books that, I'm, that I did with that. You, know you started I mean? that book. That was your very... Yeah. Besides the dope game. Your very start in life after the dope game. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I got to I gotta put this same energy. So, if I'm... If I'm going to find a plug wherever I'm going to find my plug at, I got to do that same shit with books. And people don't get that. So if you put your same hustle in in your career, in your dreams, in your woman or your dude, you put that same hustle and that stuff that you put in 
into that illegal stuff or that stuff that don't mean shit, like talking about people and all that other shit that people do. You know, you put that same grind at that, you'll fuck around and have a bunch of millionaires. Like, damn, how you making all that money? Okay. So, in the indictment, uh, what we was talking about first lady and the feedback that you got from it, because I know it had to be excellent because you came back and did it too. Plus, I watched all the good feedback on Facebook too, because it was smart. You were smart with your first lady page and your mighty wing page. <laughs> and you did this read one, two, and three pages. So, I know that it was a big drive for you. So, with indictment, what made you sit down and say, let me not do first lady three and give you something new? I want to bring a new franchise. Um, Cause I'm into franchises and, and just watching Fast and the Furious and stuff like that. Franchises win, you know. And me and T, and, but you do, but most people don't. And me, me and uh, me and T talked about that. It's funny because it's like he like, bro, how much money did you make? When well, he seen the numbers that we were saying this, but he like. It does that like that. I'm like, yeah, you know. So like, when you when you able to get somebody a story and they can still relate to the story and still remember what happened in part one or part three, they like, yo. That. See, for me, my, I had to explain to you with part two. I said, I'm a thinker, um, and I'm not deep like you. Like, oh, well, she know. I know a little bit about film. I don't know a whole lot about film. Right. I just run with the circle they know about film. But I, yeah, I'm a think, and I'm looking like, oh, he about to head into some major shit with this part three, because I'm sitting here and trying to write my part two out with your part three. Right. But the only reason why I don't like sequels and the whole thing is because you have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> but I and like now, because I know you got people even more pissed in your inbox, like, I dare you to go on a whole nother franchise, and now you're saying it's a franchise, so we know it's going to be an indictment too. So, get into indictment. Let us know what it's about, um, how to get these tickets. How to get the tickets. Tickets are always important, but we'll talk about what it's about. Cool. So, um, it's a guy named Jonathan Carter. He's married to um, Jennifer character, and he has a son. And something happens in the beginning that somebody says that he's a drug dealer. And his best friend who's been there with him through everything just happened to be a cop. And what happens is he ends up getting this case. So he has to figure out if his best friend is really this drug dealer or something that he never seen them with. He helped him open his restaurant. He helped him with his kids. I mean, they best friends. And he's been told that this guy's a drug dealer. And it just goes from there. Like, he's like, is he a drug dealer? Is he a good guy? And he don't know. He don't really know. Because he's like... And this is his best friend? This is his best friend. You know, he's like, what the fuck? Like, are you kidding me? Like, and Jonathan Carter's father was a drug dealer. You know? And dude, like, your father was an alcoholic. That would mean that you were drunk. So, you see, like, if I had the kind of money that they say I have, would I be having a mortgage? Would I be paying for, I mean, would we do, be doing fundraisers for our kids? I'd be paying for it, you know? And they, he trying to figure out if this guy really a good actor or, or really a good guy, you know? And that's what it's really about. So when I see, when I, the more I watch it out, and it's like, yo, is he really this good guy? And y'all going to find out at the end, y'all going to be like, oh, my God, he's really this, you know? And that's why it's like some like fugitives and stuff. Yeah, and then and then right then so in part two, I can tell you right now, you gotta build his life back up. What was he? What is he? You know, was he a drug dealer? Was he a good guy? If he a drug dealer, is this connect gonna still wanna mess with him? If he was a good guy, is his wife gonna still wanna deal with him? You know, because you put out rumors on people, you don't even know who you touching and who you destroying. You know, and that's what it's about. And then you get Fucking fire all through the movie, you know. And I think that I think so. It's gonna be a wow. It's gonna be that. It's gonna be like really. But we can't really, really check you because, like, you know, I'll let come talk to you at the movie for yeah. the first lady. So now I have to sit in my car and look for you. Like, like, it's funny because I want everybody to be on live. 
I want them to do their live. I want them to show that screen. I want them to say they. Yeah, we want you to show your screen, but don't, we don't want y'all to sit there and take this whole movie. Man, if you take the whole movie, you got that much time fucking tape it. You know, it, it come out clear on Tubi and IMDb TV. Okay, so if you want to, and they free. It ain't like like you. It's like the shit free now. So they go, so and you know, and you know they will know. They see it. They don't care. They don't care about being free devices. They rather be put on YouTube so they can watch for free. Right. And that's the dumbest shit because it's free. Yeah. Like you don't even have to do the bootleg. Like bootlegging should be done now. You know it should be. It's not, but it should be when you could just say I'm going to watch it on Tubi for free. You don't even have to make. But then, then, then it's like a two dollar DVD. Like you didn't took this. Fifty, sixty thousand dollar project, but then go to lot of money. You need to feed your kids. I don't even care no more, man. We gonna make this money regardless. You know? Yeah, because it's not like you just hit a lot of people don't know. It's free. Uh, yeah, most people got Amazon just off rip. Yeah. You have Amazon off rip. Yeah, Amazon Prime is actually free. It's free. Um, yeah, we're not doing Netflix. I'm not doing Netflix. They're not gonna make me no more money than I'm making already. They gonna give me three hundred thousand dollars for me to do a marketing deal, or even a million dollars for me to do a licensing deal with them, and then I don't get more money if I watch. If y'all, if ten million people watch it, I only still got one million dollars. I give you the middle finger. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody don't understand. They just think like um, I'm on Netflix. They yeah, they think because we because if you're independent, that Netflix then pick it up. No, Netflix offer. And most independent turn it down because they see the bigger, it's bigger numbers. And a lot of people don't understand that because I know a lot of people say, oh, hell, they're giving it away for free because you saw it on Facebook. That don't mean it was given away for free because right. it's still all kind of outlets. They still contact you about everything, but they would know. Man, they hit me. I, I've been hit for every, for, from every platform to give them a movie in the last six months. And that, but that's because you got the, and then because another thing you do, you do bring in some, I don't, they're not A-list actors. Okay? No, they're not. They're not A-list actors, but they actors. They yeah, influencers. TV, yes, they influencers. And sometimes we don't even know they do a good job until we see them actually do an independent film. Which is, and we thank, we thank y'all for even coming to say like, hey, especially when you fly into Detroit to do one. Because Detroit right now is a major spotlight on us for the independent. Projects or independent families. You have the two top independent people in America in one city. Like, just being real. You have the two top. And when you have that, and we, and see, people probably get like, well, you say independent and y'all the two top. You have to think. We're not talking about like the A and B list celebrities that say, okay, I'm about to do a movie, so now they're independent. We talk about just two groups of people that not from that doing movies at the budgets that we are doing our movies at and women. Mm -hmm. Like everybody going crazy right now because of the pandemic and trying to figure out how they're going to market their big budget movies for people to watch it. And we sitting there like, this what the fuck we've been doing for a minute. Y'all been doing it for years. I just started really doing it. Like it really happens That's for two crazy. Years. You know, I just thought about that because at the end of the day, you're you're about to actually do a drive-in premiere. They're not even doing drive-in premieres. Every film is just on hold. They're not even thinking about it. Is they not like, even and the funny market? thing is, and when they do think about it, they won't say what Dennis Reed said that do that shit. Because if I'm Disney right now, I'm getting every drive-in and making it a family event. Yeah. So Disney, listen to me right now. Somebody hey, did. Me. No, somebody did it with Purple Rain. And Purple Rain, an old, and old Purple Rain head. killed it. Yeah, killed, killed, killed. 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 It's, it's um, they got shit out of constant plan. And we rolled by. Yeah. Line, line was like, I'm like, this is and, and, hell. And, and that's the thing, though. People don't even get it. Like they told me, well, we can't give you the weekend. Yeah. I'm like, y'all don't even fucking get it. Y'all should be giving me the week. Y'all should give me that until they split this bread. You, should call me. you know, I wish I would have called you. <laughs> should call me. I think I you know, can't but, but, like, that would have been dope because, like, we bringing people out. We bringing them out. Y'all gonna be like, this person was at the premiere? This person was at the I wish we had the Star Theater still. You know, but. And that's the name. They, they closed down. They closed completely. So, I wish we had them, but guess what? The, yeah, one, thing, the one thing about being raised by a black mama. No money is 
you learn how to improvise. <laughs> you made them and learn how to improvise. Way. Your mama teach you that. You know, you learn how to improvise. Mama so, was just like a Panamanian. I'm gonna learn how to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it is. Like a lot, and I'm, I've with all the indie people that still push their project out, um, still be right by the people that bought their tickets and still make sure they had a project to look at because you don't want to waste your money. You know, it took money to do this at the time. So if you still to put a project out, kudos to you because it wasn't, I know we had two, two, and still trying to figure out how to do, bring it out and you bring it out and it was successful. Right. So that was in itself. But where can we watch this indictment and how do we get these tickets for this indictment? So you get the tickets, you got to buy the main shop and get it. Y'all love it? Yeah. Heck, money we ain't shot no clubs. That's not the crack house. It's not in the clubs. Okay? We open every day. During the pandemic, we was feeding kids, okay? <laughs> yes, she was. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. We got to. We take care of look, we take care of who take care of us. Yes, you will. You know? Um, so you go to Money Wing Shop and get them. You go into my DM and get them. You go on Eventbrite and get them. Um, you go to one of the actors and get them. You know, and that's about it. We'll be in the drive in. Was I'm going to start what date? Um, August 13th. And we said 8 30 because as soon as it gets dark, we come to the get dark, we show up. You know, so, we need y'all there. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, please get your indictment tickets. Meet us at 4 in Wyoming. Yep. Drive in. You got two theaters, correct? Yep. One two theaters. Y'all can pack your lunch. Pack your lunch, your edibles, your girl, your guy, your, 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 um, your ripple. <laughs> is no, it kid no, friendly? It's is kid it? friendly. Okay. Man. Yeah, because the kids can't get out of the car. We just, just listen. Bring, bring your lawn chair and put your lawn chair right in front of your car, or turn your car around for the kids to be looking like. Yeah, I was say because we do want to practice social know. distance, so our numbers don't spike up or anything like that. So we can't actually get back to find the theater to do that. Yeah, you know it's so funny though because I'm just so excited that we gonna be able to come outside for something. <laughs> You know, and we look, and the thing is, like, cause the film industry, cause we were, we was like set, we was doing it back to back, cause I what uh, January and February, we was like set doing them, so then we was looking at April, March, everybody was coming collectively and doing it, so it was like this will be a time where we actually can, like, hey, see each other, like, oh, we still oh, quarantine, did you good? You know, we all be able to get out and be excited. I'm I'm excited for you. I'm excited. And we thank you for coming to sit down with the Narrative Club and keeping us with about who is Dennis Reed and his new project he got coming up.